Emirates, we are constantly redefining the travel experience, bringing back the luxury and romance of flight. It's in everything we do, from the small details to the big differences. We believe that the journey should be as special as the destination. On the ground, we've pioneered chauffeur drive services and added a new dimension to the business and first-class lounge experiences. In the air, we keep refining your journey. From in-flight entertainment to tasty meals, it's our mission to make your time with us as memorable as possible. This series will go behind the scenes to see what it takes and the lengths that we go to to provide you the freshest and most delicious onboard meals in the sky. Let's meet one of our executive chefs who will guide us through the creative culinary thought process that inspires us to create your meals. There's several things that we look at for menu design. The cities that we may fly to, the regions that we're flying into, passenger profiling. We have a great diversity within Emirates, over 150 nationalities. Uh, that allows us a great leverage in terms of product profiling, food and beverage profiling. Um, also allows us to go into the markets that we fly to and really absorb the cultures of those regions. And again, to create authentic and uh, regional specific meals and experiences. regional chef in each city that we fly to. Um, we invite them into the process of menu design to deliver their ideas, what they think is on trend, what they think is you know, interesting to the passengers on board. From that we determine which items will work well in terms of menu design, space restrictions that we have on board and then of course the delivery through to the passenger through the service experience. So we have a defined dish from the recipe management or recipe development and then we may continue to build on that dish, uh, allows us then to integrate that dish in different ways. Once we do that, then obviously we do a cook test and a taste test, so that's important, it's key to our business. And then we do what we would call a fit check. So we need to be able to cook the product, pack the product, and then deliver it on board the aircraft. We have a weight specification behind it, we have an image specification, and then we have what we would call a dishing specification or a dishing photograph which then the crew on board would use to deliver to the passenger. Emirates food and beverage experience on board I think is clearly defined through the product that we offer. One of the few airlines which continue to use stainless steel cutlery on board for economy cabin. It just allows us to elevate the dining experience. We want every component of that meal to be colourful, tasty, full of flavour and that when people talk about it, they talk about the experience on board. In our main course menus, we make sure that each route is represented in the dishes we select and serve to you. Let's take a look at one of our all-time favourite signature dishes. Today we're going to introduce to you one of our signature dishes, which is a coconut braised beef rib. We're starting with the coconut oil, and what we're doing is we're looking for an enhanced flavour by bringing elements of coconut into the dish. The Wagyu beef ribs have just been cut down into smaller pieces, and you'll see through the beef rib here, we've got beef bone and we have also the beef. And when we cook this, the flavours from the beef and the bone will integrate with the sauce, creating, creating some richness for us. But at the same time, you'll see the beef shrink and become quite tender and that will allow us to remove the bone. We're just going to add this into the pan. Just adding in salt and pepper. Just turn the heat up a little bit here. And we'll just turn the beef gently. You start to see the caramelization coming in the beef. Just there. And that's what we're looking for as the beef starts to cook gently. So now we've removed the beef from the pan and using the coconut oil which is already within the pan and the beef fat which is now rendering down into the, into the pan, we'll just lower the heat gently. 
And what we'll do is we'll start to introduce the flavouring agents. We have our shallots. We're going to start to cook these just slowly, just so that they soften up and they start to release their oils. And then we'll add in our garlic. Next, followed by our ginger. Three stems of lemongrass, which has been finely sliced. I'm just going to continuously sweat this off so that it comes nice and soft. And then as we start to add other components into this, you'll start to see the product change in colour. Some people like it hot, some people not so hot. Me, I like it medium. So we're going to add in three tablespoons of chilli. Now this is what we would call a banana chilli, so it's not too hot, but it gives you a beautiful aromatic and a nice balance. Next we have a star anise. This is a beautiful ingredient which is coming uh, mostly from southern China. By introducing this into the dish, this will just give us a beautiful balance of anise through the undertone of the sauce. You start to see the, the ingredients caramelizing on, on the bottom of the pan here. So that gives me a little bit of a signal that I need to introduce uh, some palm sugar. Now the palm sugar is the sweetness in the dish. We've grated this today so that it will just uh, melt a little bit more quickly into the sauce. This dish for me is a result of my travels with Emirates uh, through Far East Asia and Southeast Asia. The flavors of Vietnam and Thailand are heavily prominent in this dish. So at this point, we'll add in some coriander roots. We'll just give this a little bit of a twist. And what this again does is release the essential oils in the, in the herb, the uh, kaffir lime leaves. Uh, these generally come from uh, Thailand, Vietnam. And same as the coriander, we just tear them gently into the sauce base. I wish you could be here with me to smell this fabulous. We don't want to cook the herbs, the coriander root and the lime leaf too much at this point, because that's where we want the flavors to come from. So now that we've just caramelized all of the product in the pan, we can slowly introduce the beef root back into the flavor base. I always put the beef meat side down and the bone facing up. A couple of reasons why, because I want the meat to cook from the bottom of, bottom of the pan up and with the bone at the top, once the bone becomes hot, then we get a much more even cooking surface through the sauce. And all we want is the flavour of the beef to come from uh, the stock and the broth. I turn that up to a high heat so that it brings uh, the pan to the boil quickly. And then when we introduce the coconut cream, which is cold, uh, we'll get a nice balance of medium temperature and then we'll turn the temperature down and then we'll bring it gently back up to the boil so that everything infuses. So as you can see, the beef has gently come up to the boil and then we'll just introduce in slowly this coconut cream. You start to see now the sauce is changing colour from all of the flavour base which we've cooked earlier on. Beautiful caramel colour, what we would call a cafe au lait. I'm just going to introduce some ketchup manis. Ketchup manis is a soy sauce which is coming from Indonesia. And it's a little bit sweeter than the regular soy sauce. It's produced in the same way and then it's reduced over a period of time to give us the sweetness and the complexity of a thick syrup which you can see as we add into the sauce. This will give us a little bit of uh, added sweetness to the gravy as it cooks. We'll bring this back to the boil, we'll cover this with foil and then we'll pop it into 160 degree oven and then we're going to cook that for about five to eight hours very very slowly. And the result of that cooking slowly will allow the beef to relax in the sauce, the gravy will reduce and it will be a beautiful eating experience. I'm just going to taste the sauce before we cover it, put it in the oven just to make sure we've got the right balance of flavours. What I'm tasting is the lime leaf, the coriander, the chilli which we put in. We've got a really nice balance of chilli, it's not too spicy and it's uh, complementing the sauce. We've got the creaminess from the coconut and we've got the richness coming through from the ketchup manis, the sweet soy sauce. So we'll cover it with foil, pop it in the oven and uh, we'll come back in uh, eight hours and we'll be ready to serve it. Okay, here we are, eight hours later. We have a fabulous smelling beef rib cooked in coconut sauce. Come up there. So as you can see, the beef rib has shrunken down somewhat. 
and that's what we were talking about before. It started off about that big, and as it's cooked, it's shrunk, and the muscle fibers have started to break down. And you can see how soft the beef is. I can just pull it apart with chopsticks there. Beautiful. Well, we need to taste it to make sure we've got the balance right. Okay, so we have enough sweetness, so I'm not going to add in any more sweet soy sauce. I will add in some fish sauce. Now, a little is a lot, so just go gently, okay? So that's going to give us the saltiness. So rather than using sea salt, we're using fish sauce, which will add some richness to the base of what we have here. And then we'll finish it off with some lime juice, which will give us the sourness that we need to balance. So we've got the balance right. Sweet, sour, salty, fish sauce, lime juice, and of course the sweetness is coming from ketchup manis uh, earlier on in the cooking process. So all we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this off the heat and then we'll do the dishing. So what we have here is a creamy mashed potato. Potatoes have been cooked gently in a steamer and I like to add butter and cream, but with the butter and cream, I put them into a saucepan about half a litre of cream and about 500 grams of butter and then I reduce the quantity by 50% and then I add that into the potatoes when they're going soft through the mashing machine. It's pretty deluxe, it's a little bit decadent uh, but when you've taken this long to cook something you'll want to enjoy every element of that dish. This is a broccolini which is a smaller version of broccoli with a longer stem. We have guy lamb, which is a leafy green, similar to a broccoli as well, but just slightly crunchy. And we've just sauteed them off in the wok with a little bit of sesame oil, a little bit of ginger and garlic. And what we'll do is here, we'll take a nice piece of rib, pop that gently on the top, finish that with the beautiful coconut gravy. And just as a little bit of a modern finish, very, very, small herb salad. It's consisting of baby coriander, baby basil, and baby red basil. So there we have it, first class plated beef coconut short rib. Please enjoy. As every chef will tell you, Great ingredients are the core of any great dish. And that's no different when you produce 100 meals or 100,000 meals. We provide economic benefit to our suppliers um, and our suppliers can guarantee us the freshest produce, the best produce sourced from all around the world. So let's have a look at how we deal with one of our suppliers, something as simple as olive oil. And how do we get it from the tree to you on your flight today? Today we are in Umbria, in the heart, actually the green heart of Italy, and we are in Castello Monte Vibiano. We've been dealing with, uh, with Monte Vibiano and, and, and Lorenzo uh, for well over 15 years. For us, the combination of an excellent quality product that has a, a, a beautiful history to it, but it's relevant in what we do today, um, makes the relationship perfect. Every kind of things that we do, from the environment to the olive trees and the way we treat it when the olives are picked, is something that has to be a very strict uh, way of doing. So uh, the quality, it, it's a combination of so many factors. It's not because it's only the field, it's not only because of the machine. It's a 360 degrees way of seeing the quality. The fact that Emirates is coming down here to see even a little item like uh, extra virgin olive oil to give to the customer, that I think as a passenger also is something that I will be very uh, happy to see that there is a lot of work behind every single item. And I think that the quality of Emirates is not made by one item, it's made by so many little things. How old is the tree? This, tree? this one is about 400 years old. Going back to the source here at Monte Vibiano allows us to be a bit more dynamic. 
This is a product that is especially made for Emirates and the relationship we have with Lorenzo means that we can focus on newer products or continually improving the actual extra virgin olive oil we have on board. Cold press, it means that the temperature you are pressing the olives is never over 28 degrees Celsius. And we press even at a temperature of 21, 22, 23 degrees. What does it mean that? That the quantity that you extract from the olives, it's much lower. But the quality, of course, is much better. A visit like this is unbelievably important because it allows me to have a look in their kitchen. It allows me to see that the quality that I taste in the bottle is genuine and produced as a reflection of what Umbria, in this particular case, is all about. And what we try and do is also showcase our passion, Emirates' passion for food and wine, for a quality product across the board. We believe that the quality starts at the source. We're still doing in the old way, where we pick the olives by hands. And uh, we have many people, more than hundreds, during the harvest season, which is October, November and December. And it's something that is beautiful because the people are from the village. I think what is important is that uh, you have people that has got tradition. They have got parents who are working for my father, for my great-grandfather. And I hope uh, we will be able to continue this for many generations. I worked with the family and uh, for Montevibiano for 45 years. When we started, it uh, was very traditional, but now it's uh, modern uh, with new machinery and technology. But we always trying to maintain the traditional standard. As we grow, uh, we allow our suppliers to grow. So Montevibiano for us is very important because it's one of those little elements that are part of a passenger's journey uh, where we bring an element of surprise. Apart from sourcing the best ingredients, we also pride ourselves on making sure you have the most comprehensive selection when it comes to choice. Our product and supplier selection process ensures that we source the widest selection from around the globe and that it always comes to you fresh and delicious. Let's take a look at one of our most popular starters, a unique Arabic soup that is created specifically to give you, the traveler, a first-hand taste of Arabia. Today I'll be preparing the lentil soup. Uh, it's a traditional Middle Eastern soup. We call it in Arabic uh, shorbet al-adas. So first, in a pan, we have to add uh, corn oil and start saute the onions. Saute the onion for around a minute. Add the celery and the potato cubes and the pan. Mix well for almost two minutes. It's a healthy soup. And when we say lentil, of course, we are talking about the high protein. We are talking about the fiber, the iron. So it's full of vitamins and healthy. We are using the yellow lentil for the mix. Add the salt. A bit of white pepper. Sweet pepper. And cumin powder. And then we will add the vegetable stock. So we lower the heat and keep it for 25 to 30 minutes till it's done. When the lentil gets soft, the 
soup will be ready for blending. We do serve the lentil soup always with a fried or roasted Arabic bread. So this is the Arabic bread we'll use for our lentil soup. I'll teach you a quick way how to cut it cubes. So just roll the bread, slice it, and then take all slices, open it, and cut it into cubes. So for a healthier option, you will roast it in the oven, and the other option is to fry, deep fry, till you get the golden color. This is the bread I would look like after frying. Crispy, looks good and tasty. So now the soup is ready. The potato, the carrots, the lentils, soft and cooked. And we have to blend it, which this one will be the last stage before serving. Now the color will be changed to yellow because of the carrots and the yellow lentil. The last step before serving it, we need to taste. Delicious, it's a nice texture. The bread, serve it with lemon and garnish with any herbs you have. This is the recipe we prepared it for you and hope you enjoy it. Your food experience is so important to us that we have even designed a unique collection of cutlery to complement your dining experience. At Emirates we would like to see a bespoke line of cutlery that is specially designed for us to give our passengers the feeling that you're not just in any airline, you're in an airline that really cares in the finest detail. When the decision was made by Emirates to completely redesign the first class and business class cabins, including the meal experience. We were pleased to be able to offer our design and supply services. Emirates proceeded um, firstly to design their own tableware, and then we took the opportunity to start the design process and start creating cutlery designs. Here in the Robert Welsh Design Studios, myself and the team began creating ideas for the Emirates cutlery for their first and business class dining service. So when we work with our suppliers, whether that is cutlery or crockery, there'll be a design that flows through the aircraft uh, onto the plate and into your hands and into your mouth. So it's a nice seamless experience. The main consideration when designing the cutlery for Emirates was to enhance the beautiful patterns that are already on the dinnerware service therefore creating a complete dining experience. We looked at each piece and carefully considered the function and aesthetic of each individual piece, ranging from the smallest canapé fork to the table knife. We wanted to create the same quality and feel as you would experience in a fine dining restaurant. The Robert Walsh design team generated many models and several designs for the team at Emirates. It was a very exciting day when we received the first production samples and put them together with the Emirates dinnerware. The light reflective surface design of the cutlery complementing the subtle pattern on the china presented a truly world class dining experience. The cutlery experience is for us part of the, the dining program where you have nice hand feel, it's got good weight, it represents a quality product and people appreciate that the cutlery serve with your meal is part of the complete dining experience. The culinary experience is all part of the Emirates journey. It's another thing that has made us famous and also what keeps you, our customer, coming back time and time again. And on that sweet note, what would a great meal be without a great dessert to round it all off? There is nothing better than a good dessert after a good meal. 
and today we will prepare for you a nice sticky date pudding. We will start with the butterscotch sauce. So we heat the pan and melt the butter. In a low heat of course. Now we will add the brown sugar. Just here. So now we add the cream, fresh milk, salt. And at the end we will put the vanilla. Add the vanilla, mix and remove. The second step in our recipe, we will prepare the cups or the molds. So I have this nice small foils. I'll spray each of them with the oil spray I have. Then we start putting around 10 grams. This will be our base on each cup. And then we'll keep the rest of the sauce till the end. Now we'll start doing or preparing the uh, sticky date pudding dough. Uh, we will start with boiling the water. Then we have to add the uh, date paste. Chop date. Remix. In a bowl, we need to put the butter with the sugar. So we'll start to add the egg slowly. And we get the fluffy texture. It's fluffy. With dates. And finally we will add the baking soda and remove from the pan from the heat. It's ready. Now we have to add the dates on our dough slowly and finally add the flour and mix. See the texture. The dough is ready. We will bring back the molds or the foils with the butterscotch sauce. Pour the dough on it, put it in the oven 160 degrees for around 25 to 30 minutes. Now our sticky date pudding is ready. The last step will be in a piping bag pouring some butterscotch sauce in the middle of each one. The sticky date pudding is one of the uh, first class hot dessert choices we do serve. You can put mint leaf, icing sugar, Berries. Enjoy. We hope you've enjoyed this small look into our amazing world of food. Hopefully, our chefs have inspired you to try some of these recipes at home. So get onto our website to find the links to today's dishes. We look forward to welcoming you on board again in the very near future.